Hello, hello, and welcome back to my podcast, Pulling Back the Curtain with Vinny Ali. I'm your host, Vinny Ali, and we are on episode number 14, folks. That's right, we're on number 14. It's been a long journey since about 2020, since we started this podcast, where I interviewed Mr. Earl Grant III, as you can see in the Spotify channel earlier on, and we moved on to Matt Lydon and had a wonderful collection of people since then. And we're doing a little bit of uh, low-key in-person interviews now. Uh, it's going to be this way for a little bit. We're still waiting on some funds to come through, but we have some great co guests coming through. It's been an adventure, to say the least. So bear with us, won't you kids? Yes, we are still in the next face of horror competition, where we're going to try to win this huge, com huge opportunity worked with Kane Hodder, the actor who played Jason Voorhees, $13,000 in cold hard cash. That interview in Morgue Magazine, Rue Magazine, Morgue Magazine, one of the magazines, and we're going to just hopefully be in a movie. We'll see. Go to thefaceofhorror.com and vote for me, Vinny Ali. I'll make sure I put a link in the description. <coughs> Sorry, folks. All right, so in episode 14, we're going to talk about typecasting and how it's important to know your brand. Now, a lot of people, including myself, feel like pigeonholing myself, only playing X character is not good. And it's a part of the game. You have to be able to market yourself. That's the ugly truth of being an actor. It's one of those things where you have to just accept what you look like at the moment and your current personality and what you can play very well. Now course we want to take on roles that will push us to the next level make us uncomfortable and stretch and grow very important however it's also important to acknowledge the elephant in the room and that's what you look like and what you can do very well and specialize in at the moment that will open up doors as well I had a wonderful conversation with Mel Mack the casting director who suggested that I asked my friends, you know, who I look like and who does my personality mirror acting wise. And so I went around, I asked a couple people, including Lisa Panzer, Gregory Faber, and I got some interesting results. According to Lisa Panzer, she thinks I look and personality mirror Marlon Brando, <laughs> the goat. I'm like, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. And uh, I also talked to my friend Gregory Faber, who we interviewed earlier. He said Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Ryan Reynolds. So I, uh, I said thank you, took into consideration. I mean, maybe I do. Maybe I'm just like a darker version of these guys. I don't know. All I know is that I trust their opinion, and I will take that into consideration. A couple years ago, I worked with uh, Rich Henkels. From the actors think tank and we did a branding class together and i learned that uh, i'm pretty good at branding other people what we did was we had people come onto the zoom they introduced themselves and we had to pick a celebrity to look like a three character traits that they could portray very well and also three characters they could play so what i did was i went through all the people and i made a picture and then I put down three things about them, like soulful, kind-hearted, with the darkness behind them. And I said they could play detective, father, they could play psycho killer, something like that. Something very specific. And I sent that out through the grapevine. And they were like, hey, this is a great idea. We're going to follow this format. So I became a trendsetter for the branding class. I'm <laughs> kind of okay with that. A lot of people said I was like a Louise Guzman, a Cal Penn situation, you know, mostly brown actors, Michael Pena. And I kind of saw Michael Pena a little bit. So I, uh, I ran with it. And then, you know, they were like, you could play doctor, soldier, detective, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I, I, I have often said that my three are the father, the soldier, and the loon. A father, protective, loving, willing to do what he must to protect his family. Soldier, stoic, does what he's told, no questions asked. And then the loon, the lunatic, 
bouts of mania, bouts of depression, highs and lows. I love to live within that area, and I feel like I can do that very well. If you all watch my acting reel, which is in the podcast, you can actually see my highs and lows. I'm a little hesitant to pigeonhole myself because I don't want to just play, you know, terrorist number six or shopkeeper number four. It's not my aim. My aim is to be a well-respected actor. And one thing I've often wondered is if I use my full name, if that would change the dynamic that people would see me. I mean, look at certain actors, like let's say Kevin Hart. That's it, you know, comedian, blah, blah, blah. But then you look at Anthony Michael Hall or Philip Seymour Hoffman or Samuel L. Jackson. People who have long names that use their full names seem to be a little bit more gravitas to them. This is what I feel. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, what would you cast someone named Vincent Zulfikar Ali? Would you go full ethnic? Would you give him a pass to be anything and everything he wants to be? Within reason? Who knows? So, after some careful consideration going through all the paperwork that I did earlier and all my friends, I decided when I talk to Mel Mack again, I'm going to say I am a darker Michael Pena who mirrors a Vincent D'Onofrio from Law and Order SVU. Because Vincent D'Onofrio, whom I met at a panel once, it was pretty cool, is a very introverted, deep in thought soft-spoken gentleman who has the capability of violence but keeps it under check because he knows he's in a society and this would not be effective to get what he wants. Laser focused but allowing some wiggle room to kind of process what's going on. And to me, that's me. You know, I, I'm not saying I'm capable of violence but I'm saying I will stand my ground when needed. I know who I am. I know what I'm about. And I know I can be more powerful, more interesting than just the comedic sidekick and the neighbor. I want to be the interesting broken character that you watch stumble, fall, but find some form of redemption in the end, even if it's by sacrificing his own life in the character, in the movie, in the, movie, in the show, or what have you. That's what fascinates me. Because I will say this the day I die, perfection is boring, flawed is fascinating. Yeah. That's more reason why I love Batman so much, is because he is a flawed man, stolen childhood, but does his best every day. He puts forth the effort so that he will be prepared for any and all situation, contingencies that come his way. And as an actor, you have to be ready to do that. The day I say to you, hey, do you mind taking off your shirt? Sure, no problem. Can you do an accent? Of course. What kind of accent would you care to hear? Do you feel comfortable playing this role, that role, and the other? Now, some can argue that you're losing your morals by rescinding your comp rescinding your humanity for certain roles, but in some respects, as an actor, you are all of humanity. You are all the spectrum of characters and of moments in life. And you have to tap into it to really be effective, in my opinion. Of course, it's an imaginary environment, so you don't actually hurt yourself. And I think that we could all stand to take in perspective what's really important to us, prioritize. For me, I want to work as an actor, but I also want to respect my heritage and where I come from and my family. So, there's that. Oh, right. So, kids, we are still fighting for the next phase of horror and I'll put the link in the bottom of course hope you vote for me and this week we're focusing on branding you know what characters you can play you've played in the past I mean for me I've always played older characters more wisdom characters for whatever reason I don't know because of just necessity or what I never quite played my age before so I just roll with it I'm grateful for my baby face. Long story short, I love acting. 
That's why I get up in the morning, and I hope this podcast gives you some confidence to go after what you truly care for in life, because life is very short, and we should live it to our fullest. And that's all I have for this week on episode 14. Thank you guys for sticking with me. We're going to get back in the studio soon. We're going to get more guests in. We just have to find the funding, which is always the challenge. It's not fair to ask people to give their best work, you know, technically or otherwise, without some compensation. I mean, in theater, we do that all the time because we love it. We want to grow. But there's a certain point where you have to be like, you know what? You got to respect your people. You got to respect your crew. You got to respect your actors. And you those definitely got to respect yourself. That being said, this is Pulling Back the Curtain with Vinny Ali. And I'm your host, Vinny Ali. Thank you guys for joining us. I'll see you next time.